See, the truth is that we're frequency, and we go through life tuning ourselves to different frequencies. And just like the radio, when you tune yourself to a certain frequency, you get what that frequency has to offer you. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. Welcome to the Greater Existence Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor. And today with me is Al Tutson, the Time Class Guru. You've seen my brother on previous episodes. He's came by. He's triggered a few people already. Previous episodes. Uh, but he comes through with truth every single time. I love this dude. I'm honored to have him here. I'm honored to share the stage with him in front of the camera and off the camera to do life with him. And I know that um, even if he even if he trigger you a little bit, he's going to give you something that's going to show you how to get to the other side of whatever that trigger revealed. Because if you've been reading my books and stuff like that, you know that that trigger is there to let you know what you need to change and what you need to heal. Triggers reveal a whole lot of things. So I like my bro because if you're going to say this is the type of person that triggers people, it's the type of person that reveals people to things that they need to change. So I'm glad to have you here with me, bro. Oh, Good to see you again. You know, we just had a, uh, a powerful time with the Greater Existence Workshop. Yes. Tell me about that. What was, what was your experience? You know, just being in a space of people that's dedicated uh -huh. to elevation over a period of three or four, uh, two or three days, that when, when you do that with that level of intention, you're always going to have just amazing things happen. Yeah. And you can't script it. You can't, you know, uh, predict it. Right. You, like they say, life is stranger than fiction. Right. That's what happens when you do that. So, uh, Some shit weekend, you can't make up. You can't make it up. Yeah. And this weekend was, has been just that. You know, we've seen elevation, and but most of all, you saw the hearts of people, and that's what was moved. That that is what moved me the most. Mm. Is seeing the hearts of people. Okay. And and when you look at the world today, and you see that, you know, you, you hear on the news, you know, all the hate, all the fighting, all of this, and I've always said that. I actually had a a, a little video I, I shot on on. on on Facebook that said what is your world what is your love quotient Meaning, mm. what do you focus on the most so it is the belief that there's so much hate there's so much you know divisiveness there's so much division there's so much you know battling one one against the other but is that really the world we live in mm. and is that really the, the 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 essence of people no the essence of people is at the core is their heart and the love that they are All right and Putting them in a position where they can be around other love opens that up, uh -huh. lets that be shown. That that is the dominant force in the world. Mm -hmm. And this weekend we see that manifesting right before our eyes. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Let's clap it up for that. Let's clap it up for that. Yeah, we got a live studio audience in here today. Manifest University. How y'all doing? Y'all doing good? Yeah. Okay. That's right. We in here. We are in here. So, time collapse guru. Mm -hmm. Where did where did that come from? How did that start? And why was that something that you found to be what would represent what you were doing with your energy? Time collapsing came from the idea that it takes time to change. Mm. And um, when you look at when change happens. We think that it happened over a period of time. It took me, you know, six months to do it. It took me, you know, one year. But actually, it happened in one moment. Mm. It was just one moment where you made a decision, where you finally made that decision. Now, it actually took you, might, it, it may have taken you six months to get to make that decision. It may have took you a year to get to make that decision. Right, it might have took all those accumulation of events and circumstances and all, and all that. that. Yeah. To get to that point where you finally say, okay, I'm deciding, I'm done with this, and I'm changing right mm. now. But the change happens in the moment. So my thing is, how can I collapse the time 
from when you say you want it and when you actually decide to do it. Hmm. Because we talk about what we want all the time. Right. But we don't make decisions. See, decisions, when you decide something... Go ahead and do that. Yeah. Let's put that in there. Let's so put that in there. So when you decide something, the word decide, the root word is the word decide is side. It means homicide, suicide, pesticide means to kill off. Right. Right? So when you make a decision, when you actually decide, you kill off all of the options. There's no going back. You know, you told a story uh, the other day, I mean, in, in, the, in the workshop about a woman that was getting uh, in a relationship for 27 years, suffering from physical abuse. And one day she just decided and changed. I heard a similar story and when was asked the lady, what made you finally leave? And she said, I got tired of him beating me. Mm. Up until that point, she wasn't tired yet. She may have not liked it. She may have not preferred it. But clearly she hadn't decided. She hadn't decided. She, it hadn't been bad enough for her mm. to decide no more. It's at the point of no more where change happens. Okay. So how do we get people from... It's at the point of no more that change yeah. happens. You got that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we get a person from when they s express wanting change to actually that point of no more? Mm. How fast can we collapse that? And the, and the fastest way we can collapse that is to remove the lies that they tell themselves that they're actually doing something. Mm. See, that's the part of it. So you think you're doing something. You think you're doing this. You, 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 but you, most of this part is you're getting ready to get ready. Right. You're getting ready to get ready, which is okay. You get to do that. But what you don't get to do is claim credit for actually making the decision when all you've been doing is getting ready. To get getting ready. ready. And, right. and being able to remove that veil from people's eyes so they can actually see that that's what they're doing, that's how we collapse time. Wow. And so you've been doing this as a life coach. Yes. High performance coach. Now certified. Now certified high performance coach. Yes. What does that mean? So certified high performance. Well, first let's start off with me. Okay. When, when I started off, um, I looked at the industry of, of life coaching and I said, it's, it's kind of like some kind of pseudo-therapy, meaning we even, you know, I was just thinking about this the other day when we had that person that came into the, in, into the call, the morning calls, mm -hmm. you know, manifest morning calls, and, and they professed to be a life coach, and, and they had this method, and, and their first step was to heal the inner child. Like, this is not a licensed uh, a psychologist. This is a a person that decided to become a life coach, whatever their credentials are, but they decided to become a life coach, but their first step is to heal the inner child. That is pure psychology. Mm. That's a psychological... She didn't create that term. Right. That's a term that she got from the psychological field. And so, so much of, of, of life coaching had started to become that type of thing where you, you get into the... You get there... You get into a session, the person asks you, okay, what are you working on? What's your limiting beliefs? What, uh, how can we overcome them? What are we working on next? And it's the same thing over and over and over again. And I was like, that's not change. That's not helping anyone. That's not right. coaching. I mean, it, it, it does something, but, we, but we're not looking for small changes. Right. See, if you, want, if, you wanna, if you want small changes, all you have to do is do something different. Right. You know, read a book, change a, a, a word out of your mouth. But if you want quantum changes, if you want something that changes like generations of generations of things and patterns, then you have to change paradigms. Yeah. And with the change paradigms, you got to change some paradigms. Yeah. You got to change paradigms. So to change paradigms, it, that's not it. That's not the pathway. Could you get there? Possibly. But time is not, have you ever heard the term, the term time is life? I mean, time is money. Right. But time is not money. Time is life. Time is life. We don't have time to be sitting up here healing over something that happened 20 years ago. And we're going to work on this for 18 months to get you to heal from something that 
was 20 years ago. Right. Like, we got life to live. Right. We got to deal with right now. Right now. And deal with what we want to create in the future. Right now. There's nothing back there. No, there's nothing back there. It's dead. That's why I I never took the, 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 the title of a life coach mm. and created the title divinity coach. Mm. Because I don't I don't profess to be uh at a level in life that I could teach you how to live it. But what I can do is regardless what you bring to me, direct you back to your divinity. Look at it how your divinity would handle it. And, ha- and then say, well, why don't we move from there? Mm. And that's why it never fails. Mm. But, uh, yeah, a, a life coaching, to me, from my observation, and we've had a conversation like this before, it seemed like a lot of um, report what you're feeling. It, it, was like, it was like a scheduled journal appointment. <laughs> yes. And I don't yes. want to be your journal yes. and just hear how you're feeling and what you're thinking. And then say, all right, well, this is what you do to be better. And then to hear from you next month just to monitor how you're feeling at that point in time. Yes. That's not what I'm here for. That's not what my energy and my purpose is here for. Yes. So it's always to, like you said, provide you with the ability to maximize versus making, those, make, making some small That's adjustments. Yeah. And, and, and recently, last year, I, I, I got certified with Brendan Bouchard, High Performance Coaching. Okay. And he was the first person that I heard that mirrored my message and came back to what and it's coming back to what you said is how do we start and give you scientific systematic ways to move the needle right now in your life mm. what's what's the scientific systematic way to move that we know works yeah and and his system was second to none including mine, in doing that particular thing. Starting from right here. Starting from right here. And, and drastically moving the needle. You know, what forward. I want to add, people, I don't know if people really understand this about when people say science. When people say science, what what they're saying, when they say the science shows this, the science shows that, all that means is observation. The observation. That's all it is. Right. Science is just observation. There's nothing special about it. It's a systematic observation to try to remove bias so you can see with clarity, but it's just a, a systematic observation. That's all it is. It's not some higher thought process. Right. Science has never created anything. Right. It's just only observed what has already been, that's right. already been here. And recorded. And recorded. Yeah. Then it's, it, science hasn't discovered anything, hasn't created anything. It's just observed what's here. So in this particular case, this whole high performance thing was was the science behind it was an observation of the highest performing people and what it is that they do and when we say high performing we're not just talking about finances or career we're talking about all across the board these people had it all they had in their relationships they had it all across the board and holistically that's what I built my life on and so to find something that was already in place to help people get to that place that was really powerful so that's now i merged the two okay now i merged the two so deal with freedom freedom coaching which is getting people to like let go of the things that are stopping them and and, and move into the power the god power connect to that be able to use that right now and not get tripped up and then we also then also bring into the high performance things, which allows them to actually elevate their intention and their ability to use intention right now. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful, and that's yeah. what the time collapse guru is all about. That's what it's all about. Moving, moving in that way, in that direction. Absolutely. And so, not only do you do this uh, with individuals, you do this um, for corporations as for well. Corporations, uh, stuff with your, groups. With, with groups. Yeah. All the around. city cities have called on you to to speak with some not, people. Is that not that? not cities, but uh, different organizations, different organizations. Okay. Uh, what I and soon want to work with relationships. Okay. Soon want to work with relationships because you know the highest form of neglect is not to have intention. So if relationships, what I've 
currently realize about relationships and how important they are is this. I don't know anyone that signed up in life to say, I want a whole bunch of exes in my life. Yeah. Like, right? And no, no one signed up for that. But we, we, that's how we end up living our life. And yeah. then we normalize that situation. Having a string full of, of exes, exes and, like and, that's, and experiences. That's the and experience. All. Like, we got to go through the right. shit to get to the right one type right. of situation. But with every one of those exes, especially when we deal with marriage, when you've made a commitment at that level, there's damage that, that leads the way, that, that's left behind. And in, in, in the wake of those things, that, yeah. To that stuff. So, like, let's start bringing intention because relationships are just like anything. When you neglect them, mm. they're going to fall apart. So neglecting the relationship is to not bring intention to the relationship. And since what I do is about bringing intention to things and leveling up your intention to things, I'm looking forward to that next stage of bringing couples together mm. and applying this stuff with couples. Because I think it's going to save them some relationships and, and more so than that, it's going to enhance relationships. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely, because once you get, once you get the stuff in you, and and when I say this stuff, I mean like the elevation, the elevated mindset, the elevated consciousness, and you start to see the results of it. You feel the results of it in your life, and you can see it, see the fruits of it in your life in the in the relationships. There's no turning back. You know, Artemis, uh, one of my mentors from afar. Actually, I can say she's not a mentor from afar because I've met her. Artemis has a great saying. She says, when you get a little bit of this stuff in you, you realize that you won't, you, you never want to go back to your old way of thinking. Mm. So if you can't go back, then you must move forward. You must move forward. And if you must move forward, then failure is not an option. And Absolutely. if failure is not an option, then success is guaranteed. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And really understanding those words. So you can't go back. So imagine if you're standing right here and a wall comes behind you. Like there's no way to go back. So you're only going to move forward. If you're going to move, it's got to be forward. Yeah. And if you got to move forward, then failure not, is not an option. Why is failure not an option? Because if you continue to move, then failure is not a thing. It's not a thing. Success is guaranteed. What is success? Success is, the, you said it today, it's the realization of progress towards a worthy idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's the realization of progress towards a worthy idea. So if success is guaranteed, if you know if you're moving forward towards a worthy idea, then you are successful as you move forward. And if you can understand that and embrace the journey and see what's happening in your life in real time, then you don't have any reason to get distracted. That's why I says, so don't tell yourself anything other than that. Other, anything other than that. If you're going to tell yourself something, might as well be speaking highly of yourself, right? Absolutely. Do Absolutely. you believe that the reason why so many people are unsuccessful is because they're defining success incorrectly? Mm. So, first, you use the word that I don't that I don't deal with and I don't use. Okay. You ask me do I believe? Okay. And I don't believe or disbelieve cuz belief is in itself in and of itself is illusion. Talk right? to him. So we got so many times you've been told people been told to build your belief. Mm -hmm. Build your belief. You got to build your belief. But if you look at the word believe and you look at the word belief, you spell it out. In the middle of both of those words is the word lie. Right. You know, it's, it's the word it's a lie. lie in the middle. Right? It's just a lie <laughs> that you tell yourself over and over again no. until you start to believe that it's true. Like, literally, when you say you believe something, what you're saying is that I don't know, but I'm not real enough to say that I don't know. So I have to replace it with something called belief that give me the confidence to act like I know. Mm. Mm. That's why I say belief and faith are different things. Absolutely different. So, so I want to. So when I say I believe, 
then I get to act like I know, but I really don't, don't know. know. But I get the confidence, the confidence to move, which is egoic. Mm. When I don't have the clarity and I don't have the knowledge, then I want to replace it with belief because the ego don't want, never wants to be wrong. And so I have to, I have to tell this story and this lie that I do know when I don't know, and I know I don't know. So I use the word belief to, to indicate that. I I heard one time we show up with our beliefs when we're unprepared with facts. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And 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 I would replace facts with truth. Truth, absolutely. Yes. Truth. Yeah. We're un- unprepared with truth. We're so we show up we show up with beliefs. Show that beliefs. Yeah. When, and when somebody say these are my beliefs, what are they saying? Right. right? They, like you can't touch yeah. this. I'm defending my Cuz I'm able to believe whatever I whatever, whatever I want. I think <laughs> I would say that people are not striving, mm. not even not even taking action because they are defining success um, incorrectly. Mm. Yeah, so it's not like it's not like a bunch of people out here uh, striving and failing. Like no, they don't even get out the gate. They don't get out the gate with it. If I can't be certain that success is an outcome that I can achieve. And I don't even want to move because the pain of quote unquote failure is oftentimes more scary than actually making the attempt. It's, it's the whole thing of known hells versus unknown heavens, right? Mm. I'd rather stay in this hell that I know versus go towards the unknown heaven if I don't know I can get it. Right. And and that's what happens so much. And, and, you, and you miss out on a lot of things. You miss out way. on so many things. You miss out on life. Right. Like, because, like I said today at the workshop, the level of success you experience in life is going to be directly proportionate with the amount of uncertainty you're willing to live with. Absolutely. That's and as a, as a serial entrepreneur, I know that to be absolutely true. There's no way to accomplish the things that I've been able to accomplish if I had to sit with certainty. And if I had to sit with a form of employment or income that was certain fixed incomes you know type of like there's no way to maximize the way that i have scale the way that i have with certainty it was always going out there creating something being un- being uncertain of the the what's going to happen but having faith the whole the whole way working through and executing the whole way but it's only in doing that that i started to experience a limitless reality when I stopped being okay with having what limits offered me. Dennis Kimbrough says, when you, if you want to find God, mm. get yourself a big dream. Mm. Because you have to walk in that faith and that commitment that you're talking about. Because that's what faith is. Faith right. is not an intense belief. Faith is a commitment. Right. When you, when, and that's good. That's good. Yeah. A lot of people don't be yeah. thinking that. They, no. they feel like that's just like... My belief system times ten. Right. Like I, be, I believe that a lot. I don't know where that shit came right, from. Right. No. No. When you when you say my mate was faithful. Uh huh. They were committed. They were committed. They they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't just believe they he was believe, there. They, they didn't have a great belief in our relationship. Yeah. No, they were committed. They were committed. When you come on, you lack that's it. real. Yeah. That's real. So you were committed, and it's I love a phrase committed like you read about. Yeah. You got to be committed like you read about yeah. in order yeah, to, yeah. to touch it. And when you do that, you start to see how that is the way, that is the alignment of the universe. The, the alignment of the universe is not a promise of certainty mm. of outcome. It's a certainty of process that will deliver every single time. Mm. So if you just stay into that process... You can align yourself and feel what it is to be uh, in your God state. So that's why I love entrepreneurship. That's why I love capitalism. Right. That's why I, because it makes you step out into the world and go with the only security that you can ever have, which is I'm going to be okay no matter what comes out of this. Right. That's the only security that there is. Yeah. Cause I'm greater than whatever I'm gonna I'm face. Greater than whatever I'm gonna face. Whatever I'm gonna face. We gonna are we gonna we gonna come right back to that 
we gonna be right back with more elevated consciousness on the Greater Existence Podcast with Al Tustin, the Time Collapse Guru. You are now tuned in to the Greater Existence Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. Um, if I could use uh, one word to describe my experience, it would be growth. Um, from the live speakers to the games to the exercises, it was just continual growth, information, and expansion. Um, I feel like you can't leave like you came. Like you had to have taken something from that. Um, another word I would use to describe is love. Like when I walk through the door, I walk through the people I never met in my life, most of them. And I was met with hugs, hey sis, hey Meg, and it was all love, like a family reunion. So that's how it described my experience. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. This is my love letter. I pray when you read it. Every single word, you know that I mean it. You are a work of art. I stand in amazement And I think what I'm saying Is you're my favorite one of God's paintings Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast With me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte Welcome back to the Greater Existence Podcast. We got Al Tuss and the Time Collapse Guru. We're going to jump right, right back into it. Actually, we'll come back to that. Okay. I have a good, I have a good question for you. We hear a lot about people moving in a, compo- in a state of compulsive action. A lot of what we talked about in the Greater Existence Workshop was the need to move to a conscious state of action. What is something that someone could do to move quickly, collapse time, from a compulsive state of action to a conscious state of action? <clears throat> Deal with the identity that's causing the compulsion. Mm. It's recognize that when, you're, when you are moving or compelled to, to do something based on... A feeling of need. That's not the feeling of wholeness. That's, that's not the, not feeling, the of feeling. That's the feeling of an unfulfilled thing. Versus, if you can disconnect from that, from whatever that identity is, mm. what what you make available to you as you're moving from a wholeness pace, then what's what's pulling you is not to so-called uh, bring something into your existence, but also. Is to actually birth something and give something away. Mm. It's a different. Re- it's a different feeling. It's a different come from. So that is becomes a an a, a inspiration, which is also known in spirit. It's an inspir- inspired mm. action versus a needy and compulsive action. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we're going to go back to what we was talking about before the, uh, before the break. Uh, we were speaking on faith equaling commitment. Yeah. Uh, we had an encounter where you taught me some valuable lessons in commitment. We was on the mountain. And we had them skis on. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, in the process of learning how to ski... And with each stride that I was taking, at some point in time of my training, you were behind me yelling, commit, commit, commit. Every time with each, with each, with each step, commit. Um, And I learned in that moment really what commitment, the depth of it to a new level. Because it meant for my goal to be successful, which my goal, you know, my goal was to learn how to ski. My goal was to get down that mountain as 
fast as I could, not having to stop, not like, that was the goal. And in order for me to reach that goal, I had to commit every step of the way. That commitment erased fear, doubt, the option of indecision, and produced a faith, which was a knowing that everything was going to be okay. And there was a time when we got to where, or there was a few days, not even a time, there was a few days where every time we would get to a turn in the mountain, I would stop because I needed to see what was, ha- what, was ha- what was about to happen next. And determine, he told me like, you know, if it, if, it, if it gets rough, just observe the landscape. The mountain isn't always steep, really steep on both sides. There's going to be one side of it that got a little bit l- slant to it. Go to that side and make your way down. As long as you can observe the landscape. You remember telling me all this? Yes, I do. As long as you can observe the landscape, you're going to be all right. Because once you look at the landscape, you're going to get a plan and you're going to execute it. So at every turn of the mountain, I'm observing the landscape, <laughs> coming up with a plan, <laughs> and, going to, and going to execute it. And um, at sometimes he would, he would ski in front of me and go down the mountain and say, I'm, so he could take me coming down and... Like when I get down there, I'm a wave and, and you come. And sometimes he would get, get down there and wave and I wouldn't come. <laughs> because at that moment, I'm looking like we really about to get over that edge. And it looks like you just going to go, <laughs> you going to go down, but not the way you want to. <laughs> but... <laughs> But a few days, you know, really probably about 20 to 24 hours into it. So three, four days of training and of, and, of, and, of, and of commitment. I know that final day, we weren't stopping. And we weren't stopping because it didn't matter what that mountain was about to bring me. I didn't have to survey the landscape anymore to see if I can handle it or to make up a plan. I knew I had faith that was backed by the commitment, backed by commitment after commitment after commitment. After. Matter of fact, I'm so good at this commitment. Take me to the last place I was scared at. Let me be committed there. Take me to, take, take me to the one that I said I wasn't ready for. I've walked out my commitment. I'm ready for that now. And... And going through life requires that. That each step might be each day. Might be each hour. It, it, you know, it, it might be, it's definitely each season. That you have to renew that commitment with action and consciousness. Because at any point in time, I could have went into my story. And commitment only comes from action. It only comes it's from only action. It's displayed by action. Yeah. You can't be committed with the words. Right. You got only can be you can't be committed with your thoughts. Action shows commitment. Yeah. That's it. And what was it that you had to be committed to? You had to be committed to the principles. The principles that govern this particular situation. Right. So you talk about me, you know, behind you saying commit, and it was commit to engaging and shifting your weight and letting the principle do the work do the work yeah and when you tried to do the work skis got crossed up you get off balance right but when you let the actual skis do the work yeah and you go into just putting the pressure where it's supposed to be applying pressure making the commitment and it doesn't happen right away, right? Right. You don't just press and then turn. You press and you hold it and it builds and, and, into it. And then you turn. Then you have to shift it right. and press. And then it grabs and then it turns. And you have to. And it's only through constant action of staying committed to doing and making that shift that you had enough information and results that fortify the faith that's unbroke, unbreakable yeah. right now. 
Yeah. And that's what has to happen in life. Because as you're doing it, and it's per, it's a perfect example of what happens in life. Because as you're as you're learning how to ski, so much of it feels uncomfortable, it feels foreign, and your mind is naturally trying to rely on what it's always known to do to give you balance. None of those things work in this scenario, though. So even relying on all that you know to work is only going to guarantee your failure in this situation. And that's why that commitment, he's he was behind me saying, commit, 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 to where I started saying it in my mind. Because I'm making, an, I'm doing an action, but a part of me feels like this is unnatural, and you're going to fall, so do something to stop this fall. That's the moment you have to commit. It wasn't starting the turn. It was the moment when you feel like, what if this is not the right decision that you have to commit to do it more and allow the principal to do the work for you? And the, the counterintuitive thing he's describing is you're looking down to go down a hill down a slope you're in a safety perspective your body your mind says the logical thing to do is lean back not lean forward i'm not going to lean forward down the hill because that's going to make me tumble down the hill but that's exactly what you have to do hmm. leaning back is what makes you fall it's moving is leaning forward that's what's going to keep you stable because and that's going to allow the the skis to work the way they're designed to work and I, I also noticed that in tennis, the it's it's also counterintuitive. Mm. So when people, if you ever watch tennis and people swing in a racket super fast and they hit the ball and it's going in, and, and then when a new person get out there, the first thing they want to do is swing hard. Right. But when they swing hard, the it's ball all yeah. the way, you know, out, right, out right. the fence, right? Uh, yeah. So the first thing you do is to start to slow your arm down. Uh, so that you think that's the way to control the ball. Right. But that's not the way to control the ball. The way to control the ball is to use the racket head speed to apply a certain amount, of, a certain type of force on it, which is to spin the ball, and that actually controls the, and keeps the ball on the court. Hmm. So it's actually accelerating, not slowing down, but counterintuitive, intuitiveness say, okay, if I'm hitting the ball hard, I need to slow things down and I need to pull back to bring it into control right. when it's the opposite. And so the most powerful things in life are counterintuitive. In other words, only thing we say when we say counterintuitive is, is that it does not fall under the regulation of your five senses. Yeah. Yeah, which is what we're trying to move you away from anyway, because yeah. we're trying to remove you from, from that limitation yeah. that you're used to experiencing, yes. living life through those five senses. And they're the very definition of your limitation. Yeah. So how can we learn to see with, without using our eyes? How can we learn to hear without using our ears? Have you ever heard something? And there was no sound whatsoever. Have you ever heard the voice of whomever? The voice of God, the voice of, voice of your loved ones, and they were nowhere around? You wasn't hearing that with your ears. You ever had, had your eyes completely closed and you can see things? Right now, you can see images. Past and I future. I can see his face right now. Past and future, you see things and live it. How can you see without your eyes? How can you taste without your tongue? If you ever, if I told you, what does a lemon taste like? Your face is scrunch up. You don't even have a lemon in your mouth right now, right? Because you can taste without your tongue, right? <laughs> so so this, this, these are the power, what I call the power of the invisible. It's in, mm. in like we, these lights in here, we don't know how the electricity gets here. The most powerful thing that powers these lights is electricity. We can't see it. The most powerful things are invisible to the five senses. They don't register to the five senses. 
So to be able to move in that space yeah. is what frees you at a level. Yeah. That gives you a greater existence. Absolutely. When you start to focus on that part of your existence that you don't see, like your aura. Oh yes. Like that, like like when you start focusing on your existence as an energy field, and you stop paying attention to to this shit and and everything, you start working on what makes your that energy field be greater, mm-hmm. and and operate on a higher you know scale of spectrum. You know, they they say that our aura or our, our energy field at it at its at its height can be about twelve feet around us. That's how people feel you walking in the room. That's how your spirit and your, your, your presence is felt before, before you seen. Yeah. And I wish there was some way, and this actually sounds like a good idea for a good movie or a video game or something like that, but some way where we could see each other's aura yes. and level. Yes. And we can see, oh, yours is, your, yours is low, and, that, and, and you're thinking low thoughts. You're moving from a from a low vibration. You're feeding yourself low things. Your yours is high. Yours is great. Yours is whatever it is. So that even if it wasn't something that everyone else seen, it was just something that you could see. Yeah. So that you can at least see, man. My my aura is only right around me right now. That shit's supposed to be out the room. And here's, and here's a, a, a fun fact to to consider. People always talking about the mind. But the force field that comes, the energy that comes from the mind, mm-hmm. is like three times less powerful than the energy that comes from your heart. That comes from the heart, yeah. Cause that's, and that's where that force field comes from. And, and it's, it's not to, you know, shit on the mind. It's just understanding that it was never designed to be the leading role. Right. And when you, lead, when you have a leading mind, what it... What you have is a, a thing that's looking for protection, looking for safety. Yeah. Which also means it's looking for problems, even when problems are not there. Right. So because it, that's the job that it does when you leave the intellect. But when you put it in the subservient role, which is the make it, turn it into the creative factory mm. that is creating the blueprint of what you give it to create. It doesn't get the lead. It gets to serve a blueprint that you put up and you give it and make it subservient to that. Yeah. That's how you use it, and it's the most effective way. And that's how you're able to create intentionally what it is that you want in life versus these other things that you create. Yeah. <laughs> that's an elevated consciousness. Let's clap yeah. it up for that. Yeah. That makes that makes so much sense. Like when you have, I I always use the analogy of having your 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 mind in the driver's seat. I always tell people take your mind mm-hmm. out of out of the driver's seat, yeah. um, because it can only take you where it knows. Come on. Come on. It can only take you where it was in that GPS. The routes that the GPS tried. To, your GPS ever tried to take you somewhere and there was actually a much faster route? All the time. Yeah, that, that we do we, we, we do that all the time when we're having our mind in the driver's seat and it's pulling from past experiences and it's taking all these things that are not alive in this moment and will not be alive in the future as your guiding light or your guiding darkness, however you want to look at it. <laughs> and and don't have it in its proper space. Like your mind like you was just saying, your mind is useful to create for a purpose, for a purpose. not create the purpose. Ooh. Like that's not what it's supposed to do. I'm Keep giving me some air horns. Yeah, I'm gonna give some air horns for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's the way to change it. That's the change that needs to be stated. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's why you say a, a committed man. Uh, for a committed man, there's no such thing as failure. To go back to what you were saying earlier, because when you're when you stay committed to it, you're just going to continue to progress. The only failure that you can possibly come across is death. Mm. I like it. that. I like that. That's it. I quote. I want to get your opinion on the fundamental difference between life and death is consciousness. Wow. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. You agree with you agree with that? Yeah. I, I, absolutely. Even even physical death, right? Right. Even even physical death, because if you look at physical death, when the body <clears throat> say I die right now, and I'm and my body is laying here, the coroner is going to come and get my what? Remains. My remains. So remains means something left behind. What left it behind? That's so. The consciousness. You know, we say consciousness. Yeah. We call it whatever it is, yeah. but something left the damn thing behind. Right. right? Something kept going. Something yeah. went somewhere. Right. And left this behind. And we know it scientifically. We know it. That's why these terms are very impeccable. So, yeah, the awareness of that is what creates life and death. And and understanding in in, in some you know religious practices or spiritual practices. You know, that's, that's why they say death is an illusion. Yeah. The body dies, but you never die. The soul never dies. And so if the soul never dies, then it also says the soul was never born. Right. Right? right. So there was no, you know, and then you look at the fact when you talk, us again, looking at sciences, energy can never be destroyed. Right. right. It can only transform. So yeah. if there's an energy here right now, what did it transform into? It didn't die. It right. transformed into something. Right. So yeah, I can, I can really see the uh, alignment there in that in that statement for sure. I like that. What do you think is the problem that keeps people away from this higher consciousness? Like, cause everyone says that they want it. We see that all the time. People say that they want it. Some people claim they have it. Lives don't reflect it. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it? What's what do you see as that dividing factor for those who? are going to experience a greater resistance and those who is just going to buy the book a greater resistance. <laughs> <laughs> the, the difference, the big difference is this. What's most important to them? Is it their creation or creation's creation? Mm. So we think we're living life, but we just live our thoughts and emotions. And to the point where people argue about their feelings, Mm -hmm. right? They argue about the idea that you're supposed to have feelings. They argue about... And that they're valid. That their feelings are valid. And you need to validate them. Yeah. And you need to honor them. You need to listen to them. And your existence should reflect the honor of of their feelings. Of their feelings. Yeah. So what blocks that greater existence or access to living that way is when you when you hold on to what's what your feelings are, and and let's let's make sure we're we're, we're speaking the same language, all right? So emotions, emotions are it, it's energy in motion. That's what it is. Everything's mm-hmm. energy. Brian has energy. I have energy. This table has energy. That candle has energy, and and so. We're always reacting to energy when we see it. So when we see a picture, that picture, that picture of the Godfather right here, that picture has energy. Mm. So we're reacting to the energy of that picture. And, and, and so when energy is put in motion, it's called emotion, energy in motion. But the thing about energy, I mean emotion, is that it's very fleeting. That's true. It's very fleeting. So as I'm looking at this and I'm gauging at this picture, I'm like, man, that's it, it hits me with a certain energy. But as I leave and I'm no longer looking at that picture, it's only so much of that energy that can that emotion can stay with me because the source has been re- removed. Right. So energy, emotion rather, is very fleeting unless you bring your feelings into it. Mm. And so what is feelings? That's when, that's when you, you pick take, out one of those emotions and say, I want to keep this one. Well, I want, well, I want to keep this you, one with When you put a meaning on the emotion. So when you decide to create a meaning on the emotion. When you decide to create a meaning on the emotion. Then that becomes your feelings. And so feelings last longer so what does that look like if 
I yell at you, you feel a certain energy. Right. It, it, it's penetrating, it hits you, and what happens is you move, that energy moves you, moves through you. As long as you don't put a meaning on it. But if you then put a meaning on it and say, Al is mean, now that energy stays with you longer. And so now every time you see me, that energy comes back up mm -hmm. because you created this meaning that right. you decided that this thing is what it is. Right. Whether it's true or not. Now, moves is when you hold that meaning for an extended period of time. And now that turns into a move. Those feelings turn into a move. So as we enter the, into this conversation, I want to make sure that you know the language that I'm using here. Right. And, and so, so much of what we do in life are living our meanings. See, I don't want people to start saying their feelings anymore. I want you to really understand what you're saying when you say your feelings. This it's is what meaning. this is the meaning that I created. This is the meaning. Beyond this, beyond this. You say I'm in my feelings. No, you're not in your feelings. You're in your meanings. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're literally in your meanings. Yeah. So that gives you the, a workable understanding and awareness of of how to deal with that. Yeah. And and so people like one of the things people do is they take a fact, right? And and because it's a fact, then they think they're empowered to create a meaning behind that fact and mm. call it a truth. But no, a fact is just a, is a factual thing that happened that that's in and of itself, by itself, leave it as itself, is nothing. It's not good or bad, it's not right or wrong. It's just is. Until you decide to put your meaning on it, which usually comes in the form of a judgment of some type, that this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad, and, and because of that, that's how we tend to operate. Now, what happens there? We don't know how to move principally. Commit, mm. commit, commit. We don't know how to move principally. Well, only thing we know how to move is emotionally. So if you, to move emotionally, you have to have a meaning. You have to fire the emotion, you have to Bring it in so that it stays with you so you can get going. So in order for me to be a, to, if, we, if I see something that I don't want to see repeated, in order for me to be against something, I have to label that thing as wrong or I have to label that thing as bad. All right. I can't just say this is not, this is just something that I don't want to see repeated in my life. No, I got to be against it because I don't know how to move principally. If mm. I want to be for something, I have to label it as good or I have to label it as right. Or I can't support it. Because I don't know how to move principally. I just only know how to move emotionally. So it's this existence that creates the separation between the creator's creation and your creation. And when that's more important than you, than life itself, and your access to the great existence is hindered mm. tremendously. Tremendously. Yeah. Ah. So in short, fuck your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> fuck your feelings. Fuck the meanings you associate with them. Well, you know, it, you know, we, we play with fuck your feelings, right? Mm. And I love it. Here's what I say. S understand that truth and your feelings have nothing to do with each other. They're not synonymous. They're not synonymous whatsoever. So if life treats your feelings that way and you want a greater existence, then you need to align yourself with the way life operates. Yeah. So that you can move in the power of this world. And if you can move in alignment with the power of this world, that's what allows the greater existence to happen for you. So. Mm. And it's available to you now. Right now. Right now. All you got to do is start making decisions that reflect what you want to be in your life. Principally. Versus, versus yeah. what, you, what you've what you experienced, what you thought, what you were told, or how you feel. Or how you feel. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. 
What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. Unless you create the necessary conditions, the things that you want will not happen. Nothing changes until you do. Now, that shouldn't be a problem. Embracing change for your betterment should always be embraced. But I understand that we are creatures of habit. We are prone to self-sabotage and many other things that pull us away from uh, running towards our elevation, running towards creating that reality that we desire. We seem to want it to manifest in some other way other than us creating the conditions to allow it to be. So whatever it is that you want in your life, whatever it is that you want to see present in your life, begin to create the conditions that would allow it to be. Persuasion is a process. Power happens over time, just not in one moment. So if you have the power to make something happen and know that that's what you desire, then by all means, apply your plan. Turn your goal and your dream into a plan and walk it out let your attentions come to pass. This is my love letter. I pray when you read it. Every single word, you know that I mean it. You are a work of art. I stand in amazement. And I think what I'm saying is you're my favorite one of God's paintings. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. What is the greatest investment you've ever made? Ooh, that's easy. In me. Mm-hmm. Hands down, ten toes down, one hundred percent. I have spent. <laughs> I'm like, like this is just not a question. Yeah. You know, like I take my money and put it in me. Like, I'm. Somebody say sometimes I'm. I have something out there working, money working, and investments and stuff. But the majority of my flow, right here. Yeah. Like, I take my high ROI, high, yeah. high return on investment. Yeah. And, you know, I remember it was um, about three or four years ago and was was talking about wealth and and what wealth is and, and what I didn't have as a traditional definition of wealth. Okay. And... Someone said that you are wealthy beyond our measure because of how I show up in the world. Mm. And I started to realize that, like, like I was blinded to that, but I had invested so much in myself. I've easy, easy six figures. Yeah. Easy six figures over the last day. Into your development, into your development, education, education. Your things that sharpen your tools. Sharp, sharp. Like, yeah. And like, I, I've spent my last. Yeah. I've spent my last. Like, when I'm looking at, I got $12 in the, in the, in the bank account. And I'm like, oh shit, the book costs eleven ninety five. Get the book. Yeah. Get the book. Like, it's, it's. I was telling somebody that the other day, last, the, the last time that I was down to my last, I invested in a writing program yeah. that gave me writing gigs and, and sharpened my skills as a writer. Yeah. And that was the last time that I was down in my last. And look at these yeah. books. On, yeah. Look at these books. Like, right. look, at what, look at what's going on right now. Yeah. I'm talking about commit, commit, commit. Wealth, 
we we tend to think in our culture uh, that wealth is having things and certain uh, just having certain things or having or a certain dollar amount. Certain dollar. If that's the case, I've been wealthy a few times. Right, 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 right. So we know now that you know wealth is the either the accumulation or the creation of sustainable assets. If you didn't know that, that's what wealth is. I've never done that. I never, um, I didn't like get, gave my gave myself an age, but um, I like I like ninety four. I like I like something I like something like that. I like I like that. Yeah, yeah. I say do it. I hope you make it. Cause I'm gonna make it. Cause I'm gonna make it. I hope. I'm, I'm, I am twenty three. Him, and I'm like, dude, I'm one of 115, so you only have to make it to 92. Yeah, so to be, saying. yeah. So, so, hey. I grew up with a, a, what they call a martyr complex. Like I was telling y'all earlier, you know, he was uh, in, the, in the workshop, like I had this mindset that I would die early. And the one that I would just it's gonna die for no reason. Like it was going either the either the circumstances around it um, would be some great reason or, or something that I stood on, and that's why that happened, or or the aftermath of it was gonna be being being some big because of the situation that it caused. But I just I always started to be like that. So um, I didn't really grow up with this. With this idea envisioning that that I'd be old, um, it's actually it is crazy that 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 we'll grow up and position ourselves to not even think that we're gonna maximize our potential, you know, that way. But um, I don't want to even call it a, a, a sickness, but definitely a mindset that that I picked up and that and that was fitting for me because it made me fearless in the way that I lived because I was never relying on time. And, and, I, and I've lived so many days believing, and as if, it could, not, it, it could really be that last one and we going out with a bang. And we going out because of what we stand on and what, and what we believe on and, be, and because of that, it's going to cause a change, a ripple effect. How, you know, however it happened, however it go down. I don't even remember what got us on the subject now. But I went through life empowering myself like there is no tomorrow. Yeah. And found a whole lot of power in that. Not believing in tomorrow. Believing in now. And what I can do now. Yeah. The Rev, you know, we heard this this the phrase, go for what you know. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> the way you know what you know is what you will to put your life on. Yeah. What are you willing to stake your life on? I was in a situation, uh, I was in, in a coaching, and somebody in, in, in the coaching, in the, in the group said, I know what, um, I know what you're about to say. I said, do you know? And she, she was like, yeah, I know what you're going to say. I said, you know. It's like, yeah. I said, okay, what are you willing to bet? Since you know, what are you willing to bet? If you know what I was going to say, what are you willing to bet? All right, tuition, $2,000 get in this, in this program. I put $2,000 on line. Do you know what it is that I was going to say? And all of a sudden... We didn't know. Mm. We didn't want to put that on the line. Mm. So a lot of people profess what they know. Mm. But it's just a belief. Mm -hmm. Because when you ask them to put it on the line, yeah. they're not they, willing they, to put they it they on the line. They're not willing, yeah. That's why, and, and, and you, you spoke about it earlier today. It's like when you forget the truth in your hour of need, it proves that you never knew the truth in the first place. Yeah. 
Like, do you you say you standing on it? Yeah. But stand on it when it matters. Yeah. Because it's a you are a fool if you're saying that this is the truth that you know that you're gonna abandon it when you need it the most. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. Then it's not something you know. It's you don't know truth. There, it was just a suspicion you had. It was a suspicion. You was a suspicion. It was a belief. <laughs> yeah. It was a belief. This, yeah. you, you wanted the confidence, and knowing comes in the experience. Yeah. The only way you can know something is through actually doing the thing. And so when the moment comes for you to do the thing, and you don't, and you back down from actually going through with it, then you can never profess to know anything. And and it's just amazing to me how many people live their life under this idea of believing mm. and wanting that to be enough. Yeah. Wanting that to be enough. And and that's just not something that I'm ever going to do. Never would that. I'm never going to do. And, and, but through that commitment, I get to see the result of that greater existence because it's through movement not emotion not my commitment yeah. to my emotion not my commitment to what I think it is not my commitment to what I want it to be but actually what it is and actually moving in alignment of the rules that govern what it is right that's what gives me access to empower like like it seems magical at times to some people mm. Which is funny, right? Because I see, people would say to me things like, "Oh man, you you do it this way, and and man, it's you know you're great because you can you, you've worked on yourself this amount of this amount of time, and you're able to master this and that and all these kind of things." And and I always say to them, "It's not it's not special." Yeah. In fact, if you knew what I knew. You, if you knew exactly what it was that I know, yeah, you would say, you would. It would be ridiculous to you if I didn't move in alignment with it. Right. You would think I'm the biggest fool in the world. You would look at me like I'm special. You would understand. You would start to see that there's no other uh, choice or preference that I would make. Yeah. Other than this. And that's an important thing to, to pick out because a lot of times we, we've been told to, you know, practice and create habits, right? To habits to the point where you know you don't you no longer have to think about it. It just becomes habitual for you. Right. And and I say never that. Never remove consciousness out of it. Mm. Never remove consciousness. So I don't I don't practice to make it a habit. I do it on repeat so that I can get the result and get the result and get it again and again to the point that I never want to choose something different. Right. I don't remove choice. I, I just don't want to wanna choose nothing. I don't want to choose anything else. I know the choice is there, but I, this is shown up for me so much that I never want to choose anything else. And that's the greater existence. Yeah. Not this habitual thing that people build your habits don't get um, unconsciously competent. Right. That whole conscious competent loop kind of thing. No, it's about always bringing consciousness. Always bringing consciousness to it and always moving in alignment. Always moving. Always alignment. moving in alignment. I was just having a conversation with someone and in, in, in this was speaking on health. And we were talking about how, mm. you know, like we all want to eat smart, eat better. Have better so we could so we could be healthy. It seems like it's so difficult to be plant based uh, for for a lot of people. And the conversation I was just having, saying like there's thousands of edible plant items, thousands of pieces of edible plant life. Mm -hmm. However, we most commonly know like thirty of them. We already know we don't like ten of those. So when you're trying to tell somebody that they're gonna spend the rest of their days on twenty different, like that seems like a, that seems like a limitation. It does seem like. I was explaining that there's uh, there's this one fruit called jackfruit. Jackfruit has uh, it's a, it's one of the things that they call a super fruit. So you can eat like eight of these little bulbs that's in the jackfruit that's filled with like a hundred of them. 
You eat like six to eight of these bulbs and, you, and your body has all of the nutritional value that it needs for eight hours. Just, mm. just eating these. And, and, and when you do it, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a good high. It's a good, like you feel it coming in your body the same way that you might feel alcohol hitting your system. Mm. And what I, was, what I was saying is that when I eat some of those and I feel what it does for me, I'm conscious of the elevation that's taking place and, then I, and I'm further inspired to keep that up and keep that going. So though there's yeah. the same choices that I might have been okay with at another time, now that I've become consciousness of this height, of this elevation, I don't want to come down. I want to make the choices that's going to keep my body going and keep me feeling great and things like that and that turns into the lifestyle that leads to that 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 greater existence you know but and, and it's the same thing outside of food same with thing. the with 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 our mindset and with the way that we're moving about in this dimension absolutely absolutely that's a perfect example i just saw a jackfruit by the way we're in florida so i just saw a jackfruit in the grocery store i was like damn <laughs> Okay, that's that thing they've been talking about. Yeah. I guess I, guess I need to try it out, see what's going on. Yeah. It's, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, I mean, and, and at the place the place I go, I I get it about a dollar per pound, and they're normally about thirty dollars. Oh wow! They're they're you know bigger than a nor a new more baby. Yeah. And so, but they could, and they could be used for so many different things. You know, meat replacements and different stuff like that that they do with. Uh, but that's just a different consciousness. Everybody's always trying to replace me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, just eat plants. Just eat plants. Don't you not, replace me. Just, just eat plants. Just eat, just eat some plants. Have a, <laughs> have, have, a, have a balance, right? Yeah. We had you. You were, you were on um, episode six of the Greater Resistance podcast. And on that episode, you spoke on uh, why you don't choose therapy or advocate for therapy and that made some people uncomfortable um and i would like to make more people uncomfortable i'm with it so okay i'm with it i'm with it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really with this you know because um, i've tried to stay on the opposing side of this argument you have yeah. and have and and it's yeah, led to some pretty of great conversations yeah, 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 so, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, so, so i'm gonna so i'm gonna stay here uh, for a moment, but I will say that you have been elevating the consciousness to where it's like, I see it. I see why that's not the way to go. It may be something that's useful to someone, yeah. but let's. But as you said, that's not a person that's ready for change. Yeah, you know, I man. I'm glad you asked about this because uh, this is this is a new frontier for me. And so, you know, I'm just going to go raw today. Okay. I'm about to go raw, so, you know, hey, let's, let's get into it. Um, I think the biggest thing that as I started to express and look at this, this, this subject matter that, that has been... Y'all ready for Al to go raw? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, as I start to look at this subject matter... The thing that's been most surprising to me mm. is how scary the notion is mm. that people are defending therapy because of the idea that that saying that it's not the place to go seems dangerous. Mm. And I remember having this conversation with someone that... Um, when I met them, they had been in therapy for two years when I met them. <clears throat> and after two months with me, they stopped going to therapy. And so I was having this conversation with that particular person. And they were like, but you just you just need therapy. Like sometimes you don't, you don't, I mean, you don't know what to do. That's just where you, that's where you go because you don't know anything better than that. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't talk about that. You shouldn't talk bad about that because that's what 
you know, most people, that, that's the only place they know to go. And I said, well, did you go to therapy because you wanted to? Or you went to therapy because that's the predominant message that people give you that when you want to change your life, that that's the place you go. Yeah. And that's the situation that happened to you and you sat there for two years. And when did change happen? It didn't happen in those two years. Mm. It made you more comfortable talking about your patterns of behavior and you extendedly talked about your patterns of behavior yeah. for two years. Yeah. And then you ran into a different consciousness, which was me. Right. And you were done with therapy in two months. And you started to see change in your life that you've been trying to get in two years. They used to say, if you're scared, go to church. Now it's just, if you're scared, go to therapy. Go to therapy. Yeah, okay. And, and... Look, therapy has a place. And that place is Next to the for church. people that don't <laughs> next to the church. <laughs> for people that don't want to change. I mean, they're not ready for change. They're trying to get ready to get ready. And that's okay. That they're wanting to get ready to get ready. But you're not ready for change. Because therapy, your therapist believes more in the diagnosis than they do in you. Mm. They believe that the power in the power of the diagnosis more than the power of you. And so they're going to spend time telling you what you have so that you can deal with that thing because that thing is crippling you because it's bigger and more powerful than you. Right. And, and it, there's even a belief that if we don't deal with these things, that somewhere down the road it's going to come back and hit you across the head, and it's going to cripple you, and it's going to and it's going to be an unconscious thing that's undermining you the entire time. Therapy sounding a lot like AA. <laughs> you know, like the way that the way that you're describing it, and the way that you're saying the way that it's, what it's offering. It sounded like AA. It sounded like something that, that you do to psych yourself up about something that you're not fully committed to, maybe. That you want to be fully committed to. Mm. Mm. And, and, I, and, and I don't mean that even absolutely not at all and with any disrespect to therapy. But the method that we put, a, that we put our mind in to say, I need to do this to get that right we've attached it's, it's more than just therapy we've attached right. so there's so many things that we do because we've convinced ourselves right. that i need to do this to get that and this thing will help me get there when you need to go with go within or you need to deal with what you want right now and what you want in 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 the future rather than searching for it in these outside entities or searching for a direction you need to start asking yourself some real questions. You come on, you come to therapy and you talk so much, but you don't ask your, you don't ask the right questions. You're just explaining. That that is that is so true. And and, and here's the thing. The law the I heard Wayne Dyer say this. He says the law of flotation was not created by the contemplation of the sinking of things. Mm. The law of flight, the law of aviation, was not created by the contemplation of the staying of the, on the ground of things. So your freedom in this moment right here will not come from the contemplation of what has happened in your past. Until you're ready to, to say that I have ownership and become aware that I have the ability, whatever it is that I want to create, to start moving in that direction right now, to place intention to create that thing right now, mm -hmm. then nothing changes for you. 
In fact, therapy's whole goal is to get you back to this place right here where you can actually start to change, which that you have agency over this moment to make decisions right now. That's the goal of therapy, is to bring you back to this moment. This moment. That's what it is. So why not start at this moment? Why not start right here at this place? That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And, and but more, more important than that, because let therapy be what it is. My real message is stop promoting that as the first step. Mm. We're going to send a generation of people into a system and through, into a methodology that is specialized in the dead, meaning the past. So what are the results of... And this is actually where you left off in, in podcast episode six. It ended with you saying, where are the results? And this was a pretty compelling argument I, mu I must say where are the results we said that anxiety is at all-time high suicides are at all-time high overeating is at all-time high all the all these things are going on so where are that it, I, it made me think where are these results before we go preaching it to a whole nother generation as if this is the answer and, and what, we're, what we're seeing the results we're seeing is a principal outcome. It's a necessary outcome. And that necessary outcome is, is dealt in the law of attraction. What you focus on expands. Mm. The whole psychological community focuses on whatever label the thing is. I mean, I'm watching, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at different uh, psychologists that I know and they're posting different things. They're posting about anxiety. They're posting about depression. They're posting about one of the main ones is they're posting about narcissism. That's the new. That's oh a new buzzword. God, that's just like I, you know. Everybody got a narcissist ex or a narcissistic, narcissistic baby ex. daddy or baby mom. Like every everyone who ever crossed your path and ain't do what you want is a narcissist. Is a narcissist. Yeah. So you know, I went and I started looking at the, the qualities of a narcissist, right? And I find it real interesting that one, the diagnosis is very new in the DSM. It was in the DSM, but it was first in there in 19, 1980. Okay. So we're talking very new term right. in, 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 in relative to history. But then out of all people that are, it says 5% of the population are narcissists. And out of those 5%, 75% of them are men. And of those five percent, you know all of them motherfuckers. Like that's right. what, that's how that's how people feel. Like you know all of them. You know, so <laughs> and, and, and then if you, you see all these posts and all these advertisements and all these how to deal books, with a narcissist. How to deal with a narcissist, what the qualities of a narcissist is. But if you really look at it and you go read it, the only thing that you have to do with a person that is if, if I'm gonna just take a moment and, and say that that's such a there's a person like that that actually exists, I'm not gonna have that debate today. Yeah. We're just gonna say that there's a person like that exists that exists. If you look at the qualities in the, in the things that are, that are attributed to that person, that person has no effect on a whole person at all. At all. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. Um, if I could use uh, one word to describe my experience, it would be growth. Um, from the live speakers to the games to the exercises, it was just continual growth, information, and expansion. Um, I feel like you can't leave like you came. Like you had to have taken something from that. Um, another word I would use to describe is love. Like when I walk through the door, I walk to the people I never met in my life, most of them. And I was met with hugs, hey sis, hey Meg, and it was all love like a family reunion. So that's how it described my experience. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24 seven community. Go to brianhippolite.com or do you mu.com to join Manifest University today.
This is my love letter. I pray when you read it. Every single word, you know that I mean it. You are a work of art. I stand in amazement. And I think what I'm saying is you're my favorite one of God's paintings. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. Oh, let's, let's get some air horns for holding And for the fact that when you're moving in wholeness, you aren't going to be affected by anybody. I don't care what label they got, what mood they in, what vibration they on. If you're not looking for something else to help you add up, you're not going to be affected by that. So go on with you, because I feel like what what you're saying is that it really don't matter if somebody is a narcissist or not or whatever label you want to give them. What's important is that you move from holding. It's important that you are whole. Mm. So what does the psychological community do? Instead of promoting wholeness, they promote anti-narcissism. Right. So, it, as a result, we see the identification of narcissism going up through the roof. <laughs> and that's the literal result. That's the necessary. Just like toxic. To- the word like toxic. toxic. Oh, let me get to toxic. So, <laughs> but let, let, let's just, we see the necessary result of focusing on something, which means whatever you focus on expands. You cannot bring into the something into existence by focusing on the opposite of that thing. That's, that's universal law. So we we have a, a, a whole entire methodology that we're calling mental health. And if we understand how the healthcare industry is really a sick care industry. Mm-hmm. And now we're talking about mental health, which we're really talking about mental, mental sickness. sickness. Yeah. And that's how we're expanding our approach in this subject matter. And we calling that help yeah. for society. Get the fuck out. We're going to draw some explosions for that one. We're going we to draw some air horns. That's not helping, huh? And then, okay, let's talk about toxic. So all these all these terms are given to us by this community. Yeah. And and it's and and the reason why it's given to us because there's a belief that you have to identify these things because these things have so much power over you. And if you if they go if you go ignorant to these concepts, then you're gonna fall victim to these concepts. And Man, that's just so flawed in so many ways. But let's just talk about toxic. And again... Most people don't know what it means. Well, let's look at this other parallel. What's the one we hear the most that's toxic? Masculinity. Masculinity. Yeah. Right? Remember, narcissists, the characteristics. And I can't I can't give you the characteristics because this is the first time I just recently studied it, so I don't have a master in it. A, a mastery in it right now, but the first thing is a like a over importance or, uh, of confidence and or belief in yourself or exaggerated belief in yourself and, and, and that kind of thing, mm. which can easily be a very male trait, right? All right. A very masculine trait can be deemed that way. Mm-hmm. But let's go back. Toxic masculinity. So what's toxic? We put masculinity. And we put it, and we put the label toxic, toxic on it. You don't really hear. I know you, you hear some people talking about toxic femininity, but it's not on anywhere of the scale of toxic masculinity. Yeah, but, they, and they use it like it's a joke. Like yeah. they be like when it like a woman uh, eating off your plate while right, her plate's right, full. Right, That's right. toxic femininity. Right, 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 <laughs> right. So <laughs> now let's look at the truth of it. That's abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Masculinity in no form whatsoever is toxic. Right. I'm going to say that again. Masculinity in no form whatsoever is toxic. Anything that you do unconsciously 
will be perverted. So what is being described as unconsciousness, I mean, as, as toxic masculinity, is unconscious masculinity. Anything that you do unconscious will be perverted. I don't care what it is. Because you're operating something and you're, you're, you're dealing with a power that you are not qualified to handle. Mm. So you will mismanage and mishandle that thing. But to then turn the car and turn the... If you got a, a, a driver, you put a, a person in behind the, um, the driver's seat of a race car and all they have is a driver's license. And then you're going to call the race car toxic? Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. That's right. what we're doing. No, right. the race car is not toxic. The race car is the race car. We just put an unconscious person behind the wheel, into the, and now it became dangerous. That's anything. That's anything. And and they're so committed. And when I say they, I mean the entities that produce these, these titles and give us these things. They're so committed to it. Um, I just Googled, um, you know, narcissistic traits. It came up with narcissistic personality disorder, also known as NPD. Yes. And um, I don't know if you know this or not, but NPD treatment can help, but this condition cannot be cured. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this yes. condition oh, cannot. Yes. This is what it says. Yes. That is, this condition cannot. Yes. Chronic. Is the yes. word that they use to describe it can last for years or lifelong. Yes. In fact, I, if, if, I, again, I'm, 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 I'm new on this research, but it says that they removed the disorder from the DSM and they, they put it under a blanket term because there's no cure. There's no way to treat it. So now we just like it's no way to kill a boogeyman, right? <laughs> exactly. OK, that's exactly. what I thought. And, and that's like I love that analogy. Because this is what we do in life. We draw the boogeyman. And we create the poster. And we put it on the wall of the boogeyman. And then we turn around and get afraid. Afraid of the, of the no, thing we, we created. created. Yeah. And that's what they're giving us. They yeah. create this stuff. And then instead of working on the empowerment that you don't um, succumb to anything, they start to expand this consciousness that you got to be aware, be aware of a narcissist. Make sure he's not a narcissist. Make sure he's not. A so now you don't even you out here in the world thinking that you have to be afraid of something outside of you. Or protecting yourself. From and you something call else. that mental health. Mm. Get the fuck out of here. It's all rooted I'm in fear. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm aunt. sorry. We can do better to, for society than what that shit they're giving us. Yeah. I'm sorry. Where's and, the and only people that have a problem with what I'm saying are people that are addicted to powerlessness. That's right. That's, That's right. The only people That's that right. have, the only people you have a problem with what I'm saying is you don't think you have the power to control your fucking life. So let's talk about these powerless motherfuckers okay, real let's quick, talk about man. <laughs> Why is it that these powerless energies seem to be the ones with extra batteries in their mouths like they life ain't got no power but they mouths do mm. we grew up like in 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 the, in the street like you learn real quick who was really moving in power and who was just moving it in, in they with their mouth yeah. and you learn to not move with your mouth because there's real power out here that's gonna come test you about that yes so now right. we see in this realm about of, that in, about that life right so now what we see is a lot of people who aren't about that life, trying to live life, going through life, not about not about that life, but wanting you to know about their trials and, and their tribulations, yeah. wanting you to be in it with them. Yeah. Um, is there a name for that or should we not give it a label? What do what do we do with those people? How we how we deal with that? Well, the first thing is is is. They're not powerless. They're addicted to powerlessness. Okay. So that's the first thing. The attractiveness to that is that the victim is always right. Mm-hmm. Victimhood, you're always right. So whenever you profess to be a victim, what's the first thing that you're being told that, that people in society is telling folks to do? Up-level and apply empathy. Yeah. And compassion. 
Yeah. To the victim. Yeah. So remove accountability. Remove accountability. We got to go empathetic and we got to be compassionate. Yeah. That's the first step. And so if I profess to be a victim, the louder I profess to be a victim, the more empathy, the more compassion, also known as attention, that I get. Right. And I get to sit in this space unchecked because the victim is always right. Yeah. Always right. So it becomes a drug that turns into an addiction of powerlessness. Victims are often offered protection. And it seems like most people are looking for protection versus being a force to reckon with. Versus being able to protect themselves versus being able to create that environment that gives them that protection on, on, on their own. Well, as, as Armin says, there's a someone on her team, you know, her business team at, said that it's a large, it's a great responsibility to be on this team. And she said, no, it's a great responsibility to be a human being on this planet. Yeah. So to... To be given such an, an immense amount of power and access called freedom mm. to create whatever it is that you want is a level of responsibility that it has become comfortable and preferred for so many to shrink from. That's why so many people suffer from freedom. Yes. But if we take away their freedom, <laughs> they don't they don't like it. They don't like that. They're gonna call it prison. They're gonna call, they it, gonna call it slavery. Yeah. They're gonna call it all these things. But yet people go through life taking away their freedom from them every day. Taking uh, ignoring the options to be better, ignoring the things that will allow them to get off the plantation. Well, I'm gonna actually say they use their freedom to abuse themselves. They don't even, they're not getting... Because they have the freedom to do that. They have the freedom to do that. So their choice is is how they're using their freedom to create the suffering in in the life that they're experiencing. Hmm. And and to to go, I I, I would tell you, when I remember when I first read the book, The Four Agreements, and I tell you, I was like a a newborn Christian. Because when I read the chapter, the one agreement that says, you you don't have to take any, don't take anything personally. And I was like, whoa, and I read the book and it said, what a person says or does has everything to do with them and nothing, little to nothing to do with you. I was like, what? <laughs> like, really? Like, wait, I have a choice that everything a person says to me, I get to go, oh, you showing me who you are? Hmm. It's not about it's me. It's not about me. Man, that's freedom. Yeah. So I went around Telling everybody, you don't have to ever get offended. You don't ever have to be yeah. offended. You don't ever have to take anything first. You don't. And people looking at me like, no one lives like that. What the fuck you mean? Well, yeah, but 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 we can. We can. Yeah. Like it's right. Like look, it's a choice. Yeah. Look, can you argue with it? Can you give me an example? Where I bet it's you not offended some people, telling them that they didn't have people. to get offended. I, I, <laughs> I bet you did. Is that where you figured out that you had a knack for it? <laughs> that that was a little disappointing, actually. Mm. That was a little discouraging. Because, you know, when you think, you, you know, okay, your naivety, I thought, man, this is freedom. And I went spreading it like like, like the, the good word. Yeah. And, and I got resistant. I didn't get, at the time, one person that just said, Wow, yes, yeah. we can be free. We don't have to do that. It was all either okay, I hear you, or no one lives like that. Bruh, people don't want freedom. They want peaceful slavery. They want, <laughs> yeah. they, 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 yeah. they want yeah. if they could have a high rise on the plantation, they do it. Yeah. Just to yeah. be like, look, I'm, high, I'm sitting up higher than the other slaves. Versus yeah. a flat of in in freedom land. Yeah. They'll take a yeah, high right, rise right, in the right, plantation right, all day. Absolutely. So that's crazy to me. So what do we what do we do? What do we do to impact change 
to leave a fingerprint mm -hmm. in this generation with all the technology you got with everything that's going on what is it that we do to impact a dynamic change in the lives around us and lead people to a greater existence be a bold example of truth be a bold example i like that let's clap it up for that be a bold example for truth god damn it BS, belief system, yeah. bullshit, same thing. They run, they run hand in hand. Um, that's out here. And we have to be an unapologetic example. Not with our words, with our actions. You can't profess to live this life and then something happens and, like, you get triggered. It's not in the triggering that you violate is that once you realize that you were triggered, yeah. that you don't own total responsibility. Right. So right now, I know if I ever take something personally, I don't care what happens after that. I'm responsible. Right. I don't care if somebody called me a nigger and I start to blow up and blah, blah, blah. Soon as I realized, I took it personally. The fact that he called me a nigger means nothing. Because I took it personally. Right. So it's not the fact that you have to be perfect in the execution. You just have to be perfect in the accountability. In the accountability. To what it is and what it's not. Yeah. So ownership in that example in a bold bold way that's what the world needs that's what's going to change it because that's what shows people that it's possible mm. that this is not just something that we sit on the couch and we talk about this is not just great conversation this is not just content creation this is real life and we're applying it in real time and showing you real results and by showing you real results then we show you that it's possible for you and you can only get it from coming inside you can't see it you can't contemplate it you have to do it all right that's how we do it that's how we do it that's the plan that's the only that's way action. To do it. all right let's clap it up for that let's clap it up for that you are now tuned in to the Greater Existence Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. Unless you create the necessary conditions, the things that you want will not happen. Nothing changes until you do. Now that shouldn't be a problem. Embracing change for your betterment should always be embraced. But I understand that we are creatures of habit. We are prone to self-sabotage and many other things that pull us away from uh, running towards our elevation. Running towards creating that reality that we desire. We seem to want it to manifest in some other way other than us creating the conditions to allow it to be. So whatever it is that you want in your life, whatever it is that you want to see present in your life, begin to create the conditions that would allow it to be. Persuasion is a process. Power happens over time, just not in one moment. So if you have the power to make something happen and know that that's what you desire, then by all means, apply your plan. Turn your goal and your dream into a plan and walk it out let your attentions come to pass this is my love letter i pray when you read it every single word you know that i mean it you are work of art 
I stand in amazement And I think what I'm saying Is you're my favorite one that God's pain is Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. I'm going to ask you a, a tough question. Okay. Do you believe? No, you don't believe. I'm sorry. How do I say this without the word believe? You can, you can hear me. Yo, 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 okay, yo, requalify, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you believe that accountability is a woman's kryptonite? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Sources have said such. Sources have said so. So, oh man, I'm about to get my ass in trouble right now. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm about to get in trouble. So here's what I would say. I would say this. There was a guy named Kevin Sanders that recently passed, Mm -hmm. right? That's where that quote came from. Okay, and he was the one that put it out there. So, recently, I saw some, a couple of clips of him. Where, so this one clip, he was talking to a dude. And he said, I'm just going to say, he said, you got a big dick? And the dude said, uh, you know, I'm all right. He said, no, I didn't ask you if you're all right. Do you have a big dick? He's like, uh, don't, uh, do you have a big dick? Yes or no? <laughs> and he was like, you know, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's all right. He said, that means you don't have a big dick. See, big dick, if you have a big dick, he said, I know I got a big dick. I don't say, uh, I got a big dick. You don't have a big dick, you broke, you're on the couch, you're overweight, and you expect somebody to, some woman to want you and deal with you? Yeah. It's like, that's crazy. She can't even get a big dick out of the deal. So he's talking to this dude like this. There's another dude he's talking to like that. And you can tell this is older. He didn't get notoriety until he started sending those messages, those same type messages to women. Mm. So then it became, he's bashing women, he's women hating, he don't like his mama. He's He's narcissistic, he's He's toxic. He's toxic, he's He's promoting (laughs) these bad ideas. All this stuff. Yeah. And I remember reading, when he passed, I remember reading an article about him saying how he was, you know, he had been out for a while, and then he found the formula. And the formula was talking to women. Yeah. Dudes. Because no one cared when he was talking to dudes. No one cared. And dudes don't care. Yeah. We didn't get triggered. Yeah. No one got triggered enough to get him notoriety. Right. But as soon as he came up and said, Rate yourself in the face with no makeup, out of the shower, from one to ten. You can't use seven. Yeah. Now everybody want to now. We everybody want to be, be mad because we don't want to look at what it actually is, right? So when you say accountability is women's kryptonite, that's an example that I can look to. I'm not gonna say whether I believe it to be true or not. That's an example that I looked at recently right. that said. Man, but let's talk about accountability in it, in and of itself. This idea of accountability mm-hmm. is, or especially someone holding you accountable, is a falsehood. No one can hold you accountable. The concept in and of itself is is flawed. Like the, who can hold you accountable? How can they hold you accountable? Bringing up to you what you're doing and what you're not doing. Like, no shit, I know that. Right. Like, oh, you, you told me, you reminded me that I didn't do what I said, and, and your point is, and you still didn't do you it. You still didn't there's, do it. It's not a change. I can, no one can force you into in, into some form of accountability. That's and most I, and most forms that people try to put you in are based in fear. Right. And you're moving right. off, of, off, of, off of the fear. Very much so. Yeah. The fear of embarrassment, it, it, it actually creates 
like behaviors. I, I almost use the word toxic. It creates, <laughs> 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 it creates patterns of behavior that undermines your power. Because what you're doing is you're saying that this one thing that is going to negatively influence you to actually get something done. Yeah. And which means it's disconnecting you from the power and the responsibility that you have in the first place. Yeah. So it gives the illusion that um, that you're supposed to, um, that this thing is holding you accountable. But that's not really true. All it is is when is it that you created um, enough meaning to decide for that to matter? Mm. Because if it does, and until you make create enough meaning for something to matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It just doesn't. So with ladies and this idea that you know the kryptonite uh, accountability is ladies kryptonite. What it really is is their inability to want to see life as it is mm. so a large part and you saw this play out heavily when you're looking at his shows is that there are certain behaviors that you saw consistently happening which is an argument with what is mm. stating factual situations about what is happening in the world and what are realities that you're having to face you're actually facing them because you're literally fitting the stereotype of the archetype mm -hmm. of what he's saying and you're there and he's explaining to you exactly how this is happening and you're wanting to be in argument with this thing that you are the living <laughs> example of right Instead of in real just, time, in real time, yeah. instead of just saying, wow, I don't like this and that's perfectly OK and saying, OK, what do I have to do to change it to the next and make something different? And again, this brings us back to, you know, therapy. Right. It's, it's this idea of. I can't deal with reality. The belief that you can't deal with reality. So we have to stair step you, walk you through, bring you back, help you out, help you see, release mm -hmm. and heal, and all these things so that we can deal with reality. Yeah. No. Reality is here. Oh man. Mm. I got something. I go over there. Yeah. This is something I want you all to hear and know and live and this is the most powerful thing in the world. Um, um <clears throat> when it comes so when we, we're talking about this and and being able to deal with what is right now. And this is the answer. This is the answer to life change. This is the answer to greater existence. Mm. This is the answer to, to all of it. And anything that pulls you away from this reality right here is not here to serve you. It's here to hinder you. And <clears throat> this comes, this is a quote that comes out of a book called A Course in Mill. And if you ever read that book, it is um, hands down one of the most fire books you would ever read. Um, and I can't, I, you know, it, at the same time, it's the most intimidating book I have ever picked up. Meaning the length of it is it, it's thick like the Bible with thin pages like the Bible. Mm. Like it's like that. But every time. I pick that book up and I don't care where I flip, whatever chapter it is, it is the absolute truth, yeah. the whole truth and nothing but the truth, unadulterated truth right there for you to slap you in the ear. But here's the thing. It says, behold, my child, reality is here. It belongs to you, me and God. It is perfectly satisfying to all of us. Only this awareness heals because 
It is the awareness of truth. Yeah. Not running from that is the answer to it all. And whether women are more prone to run from that or not, I don't have enough observation to make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> but women, ask yourself, are you arguing with truth in front of you? Or are you willing to bold and stand greatly in the paint mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is the reality. I don't like it. So the next step is to change. Yeah. Men, are you moving away from that masculinity? That 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 hard core, straight to the point, you know, quality of masculinity. Mm. And finding yourself with the inability to look at reality, face it, and say, hey, I don't like it. I want to move different. That's something to consider. Strong thing so, to consider. Either one. Yeah. If we're honest, we all on both sides can level up mm -hmm. as a whole. I level of it. Of, of, of addressing and and looking at reality and truth right. and, and bringing it to the table. So, Out testing, ladies and gentlemen, the time collapse guru. <laughs> so excited to have my brother here. This elevation is real. It's nonstop. This has been another powerful episode of the Great Existence Podcast. Tell them how they can get in contact with you. Uh, at Tiger Success Inc. Um, on all platforms. And what is Tiger Success Inc.? We kind of got to, you know, yeah, talking about yeah, things, but yeah. what, what is Tiger Success Inc.? Uh, Tiger, Tiger, is, uh, Tiger Success Inc. is my company. And, and we're, we're doing some great things there. Uh, we put some things out there. You, you'll see as they come uh, in, in the near future here. Uh, but the, the biggest thing that I want you to know about Tiger, Tiger was a, is a name that represents the role model that I was talking about earlier. Mm. And where TIGER is an acronym that represents the five pillars in which how I live my life. And that's tough-minded individual gathering, earning results. The concept of tough-mindedness, which is being tough enough to get your mind out of the way mm. and operate from your most powerful source. It's the building of the individual, where you understand that once you know what your power source is, then we need to operate in a way that maximizes that use of that power and so we build the individual on principles and we move them away from the bs is also known as belief systems mm -hmm. and then when you can when when you have your power source and you haven't lost and you keep that connection that pure connection that allows you to to use that power in an unfiltered way then we want to expand that power with the principle of gathering, which is a partnership. How are you partnering to expand? How are you partnering? What's your relationship with people? What's your relationship with time? Mm. What's your relationship with your words? What's your relationship with I thought with you truth? were smoking. I thought you was... <laughs> I thought we was about to go there. Okay. <laughs> I like, we about to have elevated consciousness for real in here. I thought we was going there, bro. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but and the last one is what's your relationship with truth? So as you can see, these are things that you, you can hear mm. coming out in my conversation. Yeah, because I live this shit. Right. I'm not new to this. I'm true, I'm true to this. this. Cause I've been right. doing this since been, the uterus. I've been. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but the old school uncle oh, out of the old school shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Go ahead and play <laughs> peanut. <laughs> Shit. Right. And when you do those three things, it puts you in the position to do the last two, which is earn. Mm. And the E is, is, is what we do is we look at your relationship with earning, which has been, been um, bastardized so much with the idea of struggle and grind and all that stuff. And the last thing is results. And the results are last, not just because the R and Tigers last, it's because uh, results in none of your business. Mm. And it's, it's in that space that we fumble the ball at the two inch line. We do it all right in this our relation, and, and it's, it's how we um, uh, uh, deal with results is how we end up fumbling the ball. So Tiger is the acronym. So that's the first, that's the five pillars in which I live my life. Then, the word success. We talked about that already in this podcast. The realization of progress towards a worthy idea. So I'm taking the pillars and I'm living my life and I'm investing it towards a worthy idea. Mm. And so that I'm always connected to the fact that I'm successful. And then what I need to do, the, the last thing that this name is to remind you of is that is the ink it's incorporated because it's an incorporated business but everything is what the role model you ask me how do we change this world and bring them to a better existence i say we have to role model truth we have to be the living unapologetic strong example of truth so the ink is not just the fact that it's incorporated it's to remind you that you are a corporation Mm. What is a corporation? A corporation is some is an entity that believes that it has value to bring to the world and it's willing to exchange value for value. So So that is the living example yeah. built into the name. So it's to remind you at all times that that's what you're supposed to be doing on this planet. Tiger so. Success Inc. And and this gentleman was the first person that I seen with their own metaverse before. You know, I mean, this year in 2022, um, it's a more common thing. This uh, new dimension of existence that that you can operate in. Uh, but you were doing this about two years ago. Yeah, it, it started coming to. Uh, to play there and and i just want to you know the metaverse is the best example that mm. we can give but i don't really you know web 3 and that whole concept you know i'm sure that we will be there in some fashion or form um but i i, I want us to know that what's real always and always will be real mm. <clears throat> no matter what technology brings us principle will always rule the day and principle is connection human connection mm. <clears throat> this right here you can't replace this you okay. can't because conversations change conversation. <coughs> conversations change conversations. Shout out to the queen. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, a portal for us to be able to do this universally. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is when we get into these spaces, it's, it's becoming less common. Because more people are starting to realize that personal development is not an option. It's a lifestyle that you have to. It's, 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 personal development is becoming like compound interest. Mm. Those that understand it, do it. Yeah. Those, Those that don't suffer, suffer from it. Yeah. Not doing it. So we're, not, we're seeing it where it's not. It's, it's more common, but it's still, we have these places where we start to go into into personal development and the people around us is they're not really with it hmm. and so to have an environment where you can come and connect to when you don't have more people in your physical is the is the idea around freedom city and um 
However, I always want to advocate, and I'm always going to create in a way that advocate this right here. Yeah. This is this. That's that's the clubhouse. Right. But but this right here is what we looking to do. Yeah. We're looking. We're looking the belly to belly, the touch skins, the hug, to to feel each other's energy right in this space and right in this moment without the barrier of technology because that's that is how you're able to consume more or consume it all yeah. it's, it, it's the more senses that you can you can incorporate the more you can consume so yeah that's 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 freedom city and and it's we're excited about a lot of things that we're doing with it and, and um looking forward to it i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to see it expand look for the everything that comes my, my own disclaimer is that due to my commitment i'm only able to get belly to belly with one person <laughs> like just due to that commitment we was talking about I've been I've been practicing what I preach lately and and they have faith that I'm only going to get belly to belly with them. But all that other shit you were talking about, I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> the, t- the time collapse guru. Give it up for him one more time. <laughs> you got something else you want to say, bro? <laughs> Here's what I, I, I really want to leave y'all with is that there's nothing other than now. Mm. There's nothing other than now. And I had a client that um, was sharing some of the things that she learned with her friend. And because her friend had this tremendous story of t- childhood trauma, uh, abuse, uh, you know, divorce, adult trauma, just all of the things that the psychological community gives us, right? Mm-hmm. And she was riddled with it. It was all, it was heavily a part of her story, heavily identified with it, and. My client was trying to give her things, and she's like, no, you don't understand. You've never been through what I've been through, and all that stuff. Then she got she got um, diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. And all of a sudden, she was healed from all that stuff. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> In an instant traumas didn't bother her, the, 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 the divorce, the meanings, the, the abuse, all of that was irrelevant mm. because that diagnosis forced her into the now and what matters. And right what matters now. right now. Don't wait until something like that happened to you you recognize the truth yeah that this is right now and this is what matters right now right now i love so, that yeah that's what i leave you with that's what it's all about the greater existence podcast thank you so much I appreciate for you coming so back to me. yeah and this is exactly what it's about here uh we both represent an amazing community called Manifest University. That's who you hear clapping in the background. And you! All day, you know it. You already, you already know, and we believe. We have faith. We are committed to breaking generational curses and creating generational wealth. And this, what you are experiencing, is an example of what we do on a daily basis. And what the Greater Existence Podcast is all about is bringing you elevated consciousness there's a lot of people out here trying to bring you a lot of things every time you come here you're going to get elevated consciousness we go with the highest consciousness in the room there's no egos involved 
no agendas involved. We're going with the highest consciousness in the room, and we invite you to do so as well. Keep it locked. Get get this podcast saved so that every time a new one comes out, you get that indication. Save it, like it, share it. Go to brianhippolite.com for more info, more things that I have going on, the books, joining Manifest University, everything. The Greater Existence Podcast. Thank you so much for joining this episode. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Until then, be great, be powerful, be God's. Peace out. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte.